So it's been a minute since I did a tutorial. Uh, I thought I'd talk a little bit about a new tool I built uh, in the past week or two. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, so one of the challenges you might have known if you've like played with StyleGAN and, and tried to generate images is that StyleGAN really prefers your images be aligned. Um, and that alignment could be, you know, a match of horizon, uh, a match of sort of, you know, in the case of FFHQ, uh, having your eye, the eyes perfectly aligned. Um, and that's really hard to generate tools that can do that. Um, the FFHQ team built like a, a face renderer or a face uh, detector to be able to align those eyes. Um, not all of us can build those tools or not all of us, it's not that easy for depending on the data set we have. So I've been thinking about sort of how to do that. And so I went ahead and built a tool uh, as a part of my data set tools library to start doing that. So let's take a look at some images and I'll talk through sort of like my thinking process through this. So um, as many of you already know, I'm very interested in floral art and that sort of thing. And one of the things I found is that, you know, flowers in different locations end up producing these rather like random like blobby shapes. Uh, so ideally I was thinking, you know, it'd be great if I could generate a tool where like you could pick the center of a flower and then sort of like generate a box around it so that all of your uh, centers of your flowers are centrally located. Um, now I could do that in Photoshop. You know, I could set up some sort of Photoshop like tool, like maybe I would just like hit the option button and try to draw boxes around it. Uh, but Photoshop's kind of annoying to use, especially if you want to like run it across many, many files. It's a lot of opening and that sort of thing. Um, so I went ahead and built this into the dataset tools library. So it's part of OpenCV. So let me just quickly show you like the basic demo of it, and then I'll talk about some additional features. Uh, so first thing is we need to grab our folder. So we're going to go ahead and grab this folder. Um, this is just going to be a couple test images. I generally recommend that you play with higher res images um, because again, you're, you're cropping into these images. So you want to think about, you know, if you want to do high res style again, that means 1024 by 1024. So if you're cropping in the images, you need something much larger than that. Uh, so second note is if you already have previously downloaded the, the dataset tools library from me, you'll want to do a git pull in order to get the latest. So we'll just type git pull and run that. In this case, I'm already up to date. So the command for this is Python and then interactive.py. And then we want to give it an input folder. So we'll give it that test folder and then we'll give it an output folder of dot slash outputs. Um, and let's call this interactive test. Um, now there are a number of other options, but let's just start with this. So by default, we're going to draw 1024 by 1024 boxes. So we'll go ahead and hit return. Um, now this does take a little bit of time to load because you're loading some really high res images. In my case, you know, 10,000 by 10,000 images, um, into your cache. Um, and it's pretty greedy. So I haven't really set this up to like be nicer than that or to like load automatically or by default. Um, so just know that if you have a huge folder with very high res images, it will take 10 minutes to load all these images in, into, your, into your data store. Um, okay, so we've got these loaded in. Um, a couple notes is pressing uh, the space bar moves you forward. Pressing the L key moves you backwards. Um, so the idea here is, you know, you can move forward and backward depending on what you want to do. Um, after this, it's really, really straightforward. The idea is just you click where you want to align your center to. So in this case, you know, maybe I want to go directly from the center of this row. So you'll click once. And then from there, you'll just drag out. So you'll drag out a box. And uh, one thing to note is that if you, um, well, let me show you again. So once you drag out, um, you'll drag out to the edge of where the image is that you want to crop to, and you'll click again. And your box will become green if it means that it's like the right size and there's no issues with cropping. So another thing to note is you may have seen that the box goes from red to blue. Um, so when you click again, uh, it'll start out as red. And red means that it's the box crop you're looking for is smaller than the default size. Um, by default, that's 1024 by 1024. So you'll drag this out again, and it'll hit blue when you get to a larger size, and you'll hit crop. Uh, one other thing is you can click, and as you drag out, you can actually click at a smaller size, and what it'll do is it'll automatically bump it up to uh, 1024 by 1024. So click that. Let's say I'm finished with this image, so I want to go to the next image, so I'm going to hit space. And here again, I can just click and drag and that's it so when you're done you're just gonna hit press again and it will just close out and you'll see it gives you an error message but that just means it's done so now if i go to my outputs folder and i go and look into that folder you'll see here that i have uh, a bunch of crops already made um, and it's not super clear with this many images that these are all aligned from the center but they are now if you also look you'll see that our size of our images is 2040 by 2040 um, 
1836 by 1836. So this does not automatically resize them. So by default, uh, it keeps the high res size. Um, you could use the other data set tool scripts to resize those, that sort of thing. So let me show you a couple options now with this new feature. Um, so let's uh, press up again. So we'll go back to this. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete these images so you can sort of see what my new images look like. So uh, a couple things here. So the next thing we're going to add is we're going to add some guides. So one thing you'll note is that because we start from the center of the image, uh, sometimes you can drag outside of your image space and that'll throw errors because, you know, if you click, I say, like 300 pixels in from the left and try to drag it out 1024 by 1024, it can't actually make an image that, a crop that size. So guides are going to help us see where our crops are. And then we're also going to do a post process. So if you type in post and you type in resize, um, what this will do is it will resize all of your images to uh, 1024 by 1024. Now, if you want to change that to say 5, 512 by 512, um, you can change the min size to 512. So actually, let's just run this and we'll look at it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so you'll see here I got these red guides. Basically what that means is if I try to click in this space, anywhere inside of the space, that means I'm not really going to generate a, a crop that's really that will, will work. Um, it'll throw errors or it just will resize out stuff that isn't actually square and that can be problems. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click here again and we'll just quickly draw out our boxes. So you'll see my blue box happens a little bit quicker. And let's just say we're done. So um, when we come back here, we'll now see that these are automatically resized to 512 by 512. So it's a nice little feature if you really want to make really quick uh, data sets. Um, I've been able to do this in like a couple hours to generate a really high res, like 2K 1024 by 1024 data set. So it's really nice in that regard. Um, one last thing is um, we'll remove this and keep it at um, 1024 by 1024. So you can also add in a thing called padding. And let's just say I want to add in 512 of padding. So we'll run this and we'll look at this, what this does. So what you see now is we've added all these green borders. The reason I use green um, is I have a Photoshop script that will then go in and use context aware fill to sort of fill in those spaces. So let's say for whatever reason this image was really tightly cropped to this. Um, what I could do is I could actually grab, um, that's a little bug, uh, you could grab this space and then when you crop this, uh, it will add in the green and then what you can do is you can run this through Photoshop um, to then remove this space. So I use this a lot in my own tools. Um, I haven't really recorded a video on how to use this Photoshop action. Um, maybe I'll do that in the next week or two. Um, but I think this is a really, really helpful tool uh, for center alignments. So obviously, if you have a data set that could use center alignment, like maybe circles, or I don't know, maybe you're building something around someone's noses and you always wanna like center the nose, um, there's a lot of things you could do with that tool. So um, what this does, it helps you sort of like you can think about this almost like animation, where uh, because of the animation guides, you're saying, like, always start from the center. Um, if you don't use this, you can still get decent results in StyleGam, but it'll be much blobbier, and the images themselves will sort of move. Um, and that's not always what we want. Um, these can sometimes produce much nicer interpolations when you have a center point to anchor around. Like you can think about FFHQ and how FFHQ uh, anchors around the eyes, so the eyes never move. Um, you don't get multiple eyes in different places, that sort of thing. Um, so this is how it starts. It's purely centerline based right now. I will probably be adding to it in the next couple weeks, months, um, to include some additional alignment features. So if there is something you're thinking about, um, or if you're an open CV developer and you want to add PRs, I am more than happy to have uh, collaborators on this project. So just a really quick demo on how to use this tool. Um, I hope people will find it useful. Um, it is up today on my GitHub account. I'll drop a link in the video uh, description for those who are interested in it. Um, yeah, and hope you make something cool with it. If you do, let me know. If you're into bugs, submit a, uh, a bug request on the GitHub account or in my Slack channel. Um, and yeah, I hope this is helpful for folks. Uh, it's certainly been helpful for me so far. Uh, so that's it for this video, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks again.